today we will start discussing uh, DES which is data encryption standard uh, which is a symmetric key block cipher and it was published by National Institute of Standards and Technology okay so we'll talk about uh, uh, its history first and uh, then we'll talk about it, its structure and how does it work okay so the basis for this DES will be the feastal structure which we discussed in previous classes Okay, so let's go through its history first of all. So IBM, uh, it, it developed a cipher, uh, an encryption algorithm, which was called Lucifer in late 1960s. Okay, uh, the, the team which developed this Lucifer cipher, it was led by Horst Feistel, the same person who, who introduced Feistel structure. Right, so in this Lucifer cipher, they used 64-bit data blocks with 128-bit key. But uh, the design of uh, Lucifer, it needed some improvement. And uh, uh, the same team, uh, uh, in, including some more persons from uh, NSA and some other consultancies. NSA is a national security agency. Okay, so uh, uh, all, all these people, they redeveloped this Lucifer cipher as a commercial cipher that could actually be a you know single solution for uh, all of uh, all of this encryption process okay and uh, the main uh, main uh, main aim uh, for uh, redeveloping it or reworking on lucifer was that these people they they wanted that uh, uh, this uh, cipher could be implemented on a single chip right so that was the main idea behind uh, uh, you know working on uh, des so the outcome of this effort this effort means a redevelopment of lucifer it was a re uh, refined version of lucifer that was more resistant to crypt analysis but had a reduced key size of 56 bits okay on uh, uh, to fit on a single chip so it was you know supposed to be um, you know fit on a single chip so the key size was re reduced to 56 bits from 128 bits right then in 1973 uh, this NIST which is National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, they published a request for proposals for a national symmetric key crypto system uh, you know a system which could be adopted um, as, as a single solution right so this idea of uh, this uh, refined Lucifer was introduced uh, was was uh, you know proposed uh, during uh, uh, you know this uh, request which was made by NIST then uh, what happened so that is the same point uh, this this modification of the project which was Lucifer it was submitted and uh, it was accepted uh, uh, at, at that event uh, as DES which is data encryption standard then DES was published in Federal Register in uh, March 1975 as a draft of the Federal Information Processing Standard. So that was the publisher which published DES in 1975. But the structure of DES, uh, it was criticized because, uh, you know, Lucifer was having 128-bit key, but this DES was having 56-bit key. So it was criticized over the small key length and uh, it it uh, it also included s boxes so uh, as i already told you that um, des uh, structure was uh, you know based on feistel structure so as we have already seen that feistel structure has s boxes and p boxes so the inclusion of p boxes uh, uh, sorry the inclusion of s boxes it can introduce uh, you know some uh, uh, some some uh, some it, it can threat the security of the system right so uh, the inclusion of this s boxes and uh, the length of uh, key which was uh, uh, which was made smaller it was criticized okay then uh, you know when when it actually was used this idea of des was actually used then uh, then then it was it, it was accepted because it shows uh, it, it showed um, a very good performance Right, so um, it was accepted uh, in uh, it was accepted fully in 1977. Right, so it was finally published then, and it became the best algorithm proposed so far 
and was adopted in 1977 as data encryption standard so uh, after that it has been you know basis for uh, a number of algorithm right so that was uh, some brief history of des that how it was introduced and how it became popular now we'll discuss the structure of uh, des uh, which which shows you the encryption and decryption process of des that how um, uh, you know uh, how big block size do we use in des and uh, what is the size of key and how do we use is uh, use it so this is you can see uh, the encryption uh, side and this is the decryption side so we are uh, you know taking this plain text as 64 bit okay and after encrypting it we are getting 64 bit cipher text okay so inside it its structure will discuss in later slide that uh, which components does it have or uh, uh, how do they work how how uh, how do these components work collectively and how uh how do they uh, work you know isolately right so this is the decryption uh, uh, part wherein we are inputting the 64 bit cipher text and we are getting 64 bit plain text as a result now since this is a symmetric key cipher so we are using the same key for encryption and the decryption so this is 56 bit key okay so this is a uh, 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 this is this is uh, the key length which we use right and this is the cipher key but we make use of uh, a number of rounds in des so for each and every round we use 48 bit key so that structure we'll talk later uh, in, in the coming slide that uh, uh, how the the whole process uh, you know goes from uh, encryption to decryption and then again uh, changing this uh, uh, cipher text to plain text right so all all these things uh, we we uh, we are going to understand uh, we are going to discuss today but before that you need to understand that uh, uh, this is the basic structure of des right now uh, this des is uh, made up of uh, two permutations so initially will be having permutation okay permutation will be implementing using p boxes and these two permutations we call as initial permutation and final permutation okay so this initial permutation will be at the starting uh, when uh, uh, will be having the plain text only and after moving through 16 fistal rounds will be using this final permutation Okay, so this this might confuse uh, this might sound confusing right now, but once we'll discuss this structure, the all all the things will be clear to you. So we'll be having these two permutations in the structure and 16 fistal rounds. Inside rounds, we can have multiple more multiple things. So we are going to discuss uh, these topics in um, uh, in in this section, right? Okay. so this is the general structure of des so again we are having the 64 bit plain text over here so the block size is 64 bit then we have this initial permutation okay so this plain text goes for permutation in this p box then it goes through 16 rounds so this number of rounds are fixed so each and every plain text after permuting will go through these 16 rounds for each and every round will be having a different key okay so here you can see that this is 56 bit uh, cipher key and uh, uh, we are uh, you know uh, uh, taking 40 bit 48 bits out of it uh, and we call it as k1 so how these keys are generated that will talk later we will we'll talk about each and every uh, you know block of uh, this structure in detail that how do we permute how do we use x x boxes how do we use functions and uh, how these rounds work so we'll talk all these things in detail right so this is the 48 bit key which will be used for round 1 then for round 2 we'll be using again a different key which is k2 which is again of 48 bit and just like this will uh, will be you know uh, having 16 rounds with different keys then after the 16th round the output which we are getting uh, uh, out of this 16th round 
we will be uh, you know inputting that value into this final permutation p box right so after permutation we will get the 64 bit cipher text so this is uh, the general structure of des in which we are having plain text okay we are having this um, these uh, two p boxes which are in which are used for initial permutation and final permutation we are having 16 rounds we are having a round key generator and uh, whole you know all of these things they 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 make uh, the general structure of des okay now uh, we'll discuss this initial and final permutation first of all so which which is uh, you know the first part of this structure which is the permutation uh, so initial permutation and final permutation how do they work and uh, um, uh, how do we implement them we'll discuss it now so permutation as we all know that uh, we uh, you know simply uh, change the order of uh, uh, of the given bits okay so if uh, uh, a bit as bit is at the first position we will change its position to some other position say 25th bit okay so this is how we we uh, we you know perform this uh, permutation using these p boxes so in this uh, you you can again uh, see here this is the initial permutation then we have this 16 rounds then again we have this final permutation right so here you can see that each and every input is connected to some output pin right so here this one is connected to 40 two is connected to 8 so the th this is change of ordering so the first bit uh, first bit will be made the 40th bit second bit will be made the 8th bit and so on right so that is initial permutation in fi final permutation will do the same thing so in this uh, we you know you can see these connections right so for uh, uh, you know uh, any input bit we are having some output bit and their order will be changed according to that for this we can create a table right and uh, that table will tell you that for for which input bit we are having which output bit right so i'll show you the table and will tell you how does it work so this is uh, the table for initial permutation and this is for final permutation right now it says how do we uh, you know uh, use this these tables because they 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 seem uh, confusing at first sight so how do we use them so we check uh, you know the value of each element which defines the input port number okay the value over here in this table will define the input port number okay and the index or the order of the element defines the output port number right so value will tell you the input port number and the index will tell you the output output port number now the value is what the value is the thing which we can see right here this is 58 50 42 these are values index is what index will be 1 for this 2 3 4 5 6 like that okay so that will be the index now since we are having 64 bit uh, block of uh, you know plain text so we are having 64 entries into it okay so this is 8 by Eight. Um, uh, the the size of the table is eight by eight. So this will be, uh, you know, this index will tell you the output port number, and this value will tell you the input port number, right? Now we can check uh, for uh, you know any of the value. We can check it from here. You can see that this one, this is the value. Okay, this is input port, and this is the output port this 40 is let me erase it first okay so uh, in the initial permutation table we can see that this one is being 
you know um, um, as it is it is working uh, uh, you know th this output uh, port is 40 for 1 right so you can check for the 40th 40th output because the index tells you the output port right so this is 8 16 24 this is 32 this is 40 right so this is the 40th index and this value over here will tell you the input port number and the index tells you the output port number so the value is what this is one so which we can check it from here this is one right and the index is 40 over here so its output or oh sorry output is the index so index number over here is 40 okay so we can say that the first port is connected to the 40th port right we can check for some more we can check for this 2 and 8 right so this is input this is 2 right and this is output okay so how we can check it yes we go to um, you you can uh, you can you can go either way uh, you can uh, move through values or uh, through the index but moving through index will be easier right so that is the eighth index okay and its value you can see from here this is 2 right so the value tells you the input port and the index tells you the output port so the value is 2 that means the input port is 2 okay which is here and the index is 8 index over here is 8 so we can see that uh, this 2 is connected to 8 let me use the eraser again yes you can see it now this 2 is connected to 8 okay so this 8 is uh, output for this second port okay? input right we can check for some more values over here we can see the connection connection if we see this 64 or 25 ka agar hum check karte hai. so 64 is input okay so we have to check for this 64 value so we can check it uh, instead we if if we check for this uh, output port which is the index so that will be easier for us so 64 that, that is you know this one is this is 25th index okay and here we can see that the value is 64 so the 64 tells you about the input port and its index which is 25 which tells you about the output port Right, so here this input is 64 and output is 25. So just like this initial table, initial permutation table, we have this final permutation table as well. So herein we can see that uh, this 1 is input and 58 is output. Right, so 1 is input port and we can check for 58th index which is this one. So here this value is 1. Right. Okay, we can check for one more. This is 8, this is 2, 8 is input and 2 is output. So we have to check for the second index wherein the value is 8. Okay, so this is how this initial and permutation table, they, they work. Okay. Now these initial and final permutation are straight P boxes uh, that are inverses of each other. They have no cryptographic significance in des right so uh, both of these uh, permutations which we have used both of these p boxes are keylex uh, keyless and uh, uh, predetermined okay in ki value humare paas pehle hi hogi the reason they are included in D des is not clear and has not been revealed by the des designer right so uh, the, the idea is that initial and final permutation are easy to implement on hardware chips with 8-bit interfaces and uh, that those chips were, uh, you know, they, they were popular at that time when uh, DES was invented. 
so uh, the, the the designer uh, the designers of des made use of these permutations right there is no as such as such there is no significance of using these permutations but they are included in design okay so that is about uh, uh, the initial and the final permutation okay next we have is uh, uh, rounds okay uh, that was the structure if you see it initial permutation first of all we have then we have 16 rounds so we are done with this initial and final permutation we have understood that how do they work now we'll understand that how um, uh, how do these rounds work okay how do we implement them right so so uh, the basic idea behind uh, these uh, you know rounds is the same as fister structure okay so ek round ke andar hum log kya karenge will be dividing the plain text into uh, you know left part and right part then we'll be applying some components and the components uh, some of these components might be you know uh, invertible some might be non invertible and we use we make use of the functions which is this this one this function into the rounds so these functions are uh, you know the most crucial part of des they are called the heart of des right so all these things will be having in a round uh you know the, these things uh, also you can see they are same this uh, this mixer wherein we use this xor operation uh on the output of this function and the left part of the plain text after permutation okay so this is the thing which uh, where, uh, you know this is the thing we are talking um, uh after permuting the plain text right so we have this mixer over here we have a swapper as we had in fistel structure and the output of each and every round will be again a 64 bit uh, uh, you know block which will work as an input to the next round okay so we have this uh, this l11 uh, it uh, sorry uh, this l11 um, it represents that you are talking about round 1 okay so we are in round 1 so we uh, you know uh, represent it accordingly if we are in round 2 we represent it uh, uh, you know using two subscript fine so here this uh, for round 1 the key is k1 the process is same we simply uh, you know use this value of uh, uh, the right part of the plain text for implementing this function then the function of this output which has you know performed some uh, you know uh, calculations or a series of calculations using this right part of the of the given text and this k1 which is the key for round 1 it performs that calculation and its output will be exored with the left part of the message okay then after exoring it we swap the left part and the right part fine so this is how these this the mixer and swapper they work now this after after this round one will be having uh, the next round so this is how this this uh, given 64 bit plain text it goes through uh, 16 uh, rounds and then at last round at uh, uh, you know at the after the 16th round again we apply the final permutation and then as a result we get the cipher text right so this is how uh, this thing work so isme uh, hum log kaise in iske andar kaise kya hoga kaise mixing hogi uh, ye function kaise kaam karta hai that we'll discuss in the next slides okay so this is the working of a pro, uh, of a particular round inside this round or any other round how uh, this data is changed from one form to another form and how do we uh, perform these xor operations how do we carry out these functions that will talk in the coming slides right so 
next we have is des function so now we are talking about this function part of any round okay so as i already told you that uh, uh, these functions are the heart of des okay and this des function it applies a 40 bit of uh, sorry 48 bit key to the rightmost 32 bit to produce a 32 bit output so what is uh, you know how how does it work see the input to this function is what the right part of the message right you can see from here this is the right part so this is the input to the message and the second input we have is this k1 now we have divided the 64 bit uh, message into two parts so this right part is ma made up of 32 bits and we have this key k1 as 48 bit key right so this is 48 bit this is 32 bit so they both are uh, uh, you know given as input to this function it performs these calculations over the 32 bit data and 48 bit data uh, now how how does it uh, uh, you know deal with the different size of data that we'll talk later ki kaise kya hum log usme use karte hain just to make this 32 bit data into a 48 bit data okay that we'll talk but this function that you need to understand that how uh, what inputs does it take and uh, what output does does it give you right so what we do is we uh, input this 32 bit data from here and 48 bit key from here then it processes all the things and it gives you output as 32 bit right so inside it we are dealing with the 48 bit data okay we change this 32 bit data into 48 bit data inside this we are dealing with the 48 bit data but it gives us data which is 32 bit long because this left and right part of the data they have to be of 32 bits right because the size of plain text will remain 64 bit as in total okay so inside this block inside this component which is the mixer component will be changing the size of plain text then we'll be dealing with it and then we'll again change its size to 32 bits and then we'll be outputting it after from the mixer how do we do that we'll talk about this now so that is the same thing it is telling you it applies a 48 bit key to the rightmost 32 bits to produce a 32 bit output right so input to this is 32 bit with the 48 bit key and output is also 32 bit right now to convert this 32 bit of uh, the plain text into 48 bits uh, uh, 48 bits we use this expansion p box so if you remember uh, we we uh, we discussed three kind of p boxes right one was straight p box another was uh, expansion p, p box and the third one was compression p box so here we are having less number of input bits but we require more number of output bits so we'll be using expansion p box okay so this expansion p box will convert this 32 bit of the plain text or the right part of the plain text into 48 bits so how how does it do that we'll talk talk about that also kaise hum usko implement karte hain then uh, this 48 bits of the plain text will be exored with the 48 bits of key okay and then this result will be fed into number of s boxes so these s boxes will again reduce the number of bits of the plain text to 32 bits right and then uh, it will again go into straight p box okay and then we'll get this 32 bit of the uh, data which will be uh, you know uh, the output of this function here you can see this will be the output okay right and then will be, it will be exhorted with the left part of the message which is here 
So this left part and the output of the function are exode. So here in this diagram, we are concerned with this part only, with this part, only this function part, right? So that is why this XOR function is not shown over here, okay? So this XOR function is performed outside this box, right? So here uh, you need to understand or you need to, you know, keep it in your mind that uh, uh, inside the function we are making use of these um, expansion P boxes and a number of S boxes, right? And we are performing operations using all these components. Now, how, um, how does this uh, expansion uh, P box work? We'll talk about this now. Now, we can see that this right part of the message is 32 bit input and the key is 48 bit. So, we need to expand this right part to 48 bit, bits. Now, how do we do that? Now, see, this is 32 bit input. Okay, we have represented it using these uh, uh, blocks. So these are one, this is one block, two block, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so th this makes a 32 bit data. We have eight blocks of four bits each. Now we need to convert each and every block into a six bit block make it 48 bit data so we need some uh, you know we need two more bits extra for this but where do we get it from so we what do we do we will use this expansion p box for uh, uh, you know converting this four bit uh, block into a six bit block so what we do is we simply uh, use these four bits as it is in the resulting six bits and the remaining two bits will be taken from other blocks right so how how do how how does this work so the input bit 1 2 3 4 we uh, we can number it as 1 2 3 and 4 these are four bits right and herein the bits are 1 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, what do we do? The input bits 1, 2, 3, and 4 are copied to output bits 2, 3, 4, and 5, respectively. So, this one becomes second bit, this second bit becomes third bit, the third bit, fifth becomes fourth. Third becomes fourth and the fourth becomes fifth bit, right? So we'll be uh, just simply copying these bits into uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth position of this six bit block, right? Now four bits are done. We are left with this first bit and sixth bit. Now for first bit and sixth bit, instead of taking this block, uh, let using this block okay then we'll talk about this uh, leftmost and rightmost block of uh, of the data so this first bit will be taken from the last bit of the previous block right and this last bit will be taken from the first bit of the next block okay so this first bit is from this previous block and the last bit is from next block right so now we have this six bit with six bits with us of uh, you know uh, after making the after making this uh, uh, you know making use of uh, this this rule or uh, this expansion p boxes uh, which we are uh, you know uh, using to to make this uh, plain text as um, 48 bit right so now we have this uh, uh, first bit and last bit also with us. These four are copied as it is. And this first bit is taken from the previous block and the last bit is taken from the next block, right? Now, that is about the 
uh, block which is in between okay what do we do for the blocks which are at the right most end or the left most end right because there is no block uh, which is you know previous to it and uh, there is no block which is next to it so what do we do we consider these two blocks adjacent to each other so we consider this thing as circular right so this block will be next block to this for uh, to, to this eighth block and this block will act as this uh, uh, previous block to uh, this particular block right so this bit 1 and uh, this bit 32 uh, this the same rule will uh, uh, apply to them as well okay so we consider these blocks this first block and the eighth block uh, being adjacent to each other okay and uh, so that is why we have written this thing over here that this first bit is being taken from bit 32 okay this first bit is taken from bit 32 which is this one and this 32 bit 32nd bit is taken from bit 1 which is this one oh, sorry this one right so this is how uh, we have uh, now converted this 32 bit data into 48 bit data using expansion permutation right so uh, this relationship between these input and output this can be uh, defined uh, mathematically using this expansion p box table so what we are doing simply in this is we are having these you know these are the bits of each and every block this is 1 2 3 4 right we are first you we can see uh, this table as you know only this part so this part makes the 32 bit data okay this is first bit this is second bit this is third bit this is fourth bit and so on so this is 32 bit of the data now we are making this 32 bit data into 48 bit data so we need to uh, you know uh, append this first bit and the last bit okay so this table tells you simply that uh, from where we are getting this first bit and from where we are getting this last bit so for the first block for the first block or for the first row we are getting this uh, uh, first bit from the 32nd bit and the last bit from the fifth bit so we can check it from here as well so this is from the 32nd bit and this is this is from where this is from this fifth bit okay for the second block this is from fourth this is from ninth you can check it So they are five, six, seven, eight. Okay, they are five, six, seven, eight. This is fourth. This is the fourth bit, and this is ninth. This is ninth. Okay, so this is how this expansion uh, p box table is created. Okay, so that is it. It shows you simply uh, the mathematical relation between input and in input and output. right now next uh, thing in the in the function we have is uh, this xor operation which we also call uh, which we also call as whitener whitener as in uh, that we are hiding something okay after it so after this expansion uh, of uh, the plain text size des uses this xor operation on the expanded right section and the round key so we can see it from here okay this 32 bit is changed into 48 bit and now we are doing what we are exoring the 48 bit of the uh, plain text or the right part of the plain text and the key okay and as a result we are getting again 48 bits of data okay so uh, we are performing this xor operation over here now note that both the right section and the key are 48 bits in length 
and also note that the round key is used only in this operation only in this operation means that key k1 will be used for round 1 only okay and uh, uh, key 2 will be k2 uh, key will be used in round 2 okay so for each and every round will be having a different key okay next we have uh, s boxes so here we can see in the structure after exoring it the output we are getting is 48 bits okay then this output is uh, uh, you know going into uh, s boxes fine so here in this structure we are having these eight s boxes with us okay so how do they work these s boxes they do the real mixing or they they uh, they are uh, you know the component which create actual confusion so des uses eight s boxes which uh, each with a 6 bit input and a 4 bit output so we are having now 48 bit data okay and that data is being uh, inputted to these s boxes so eight boxes eight s boxes we are having so each 6 bit block will be uh, you know given uh, to uh, one s box okay so the first six will be uh, given to this uh, box 1 uh, uh, next 6 bits will be given to s box 2 and so on and in result these s boxes these uh, uh, you know 6 bits are converted into 4 bits so as a result what we are getting we are getting this 32 bit output okay so this 32 bit output will again be exored with the left part of the message okay so we are uh, here in function we are talking about function over here so in function we are dealing with the right part of the message so we input the 32 bit message into the function we perform some calculation inside the function uh, by making this 32 bit data into a 48 bit data then we are again changing this 48 bit data into 32 bit data right because we need to you know uh, XOR the output of the function with the left part of the data as you can see from here right so this output of let me use the eraser so this output of this function is being exored with the left part so agar humne isko yahan pe 32 bit ko humne inside this function we have made it to 48 bit uh, data by uh, you know for for uh, exoring it with the key then again we have made it to 32 bit data so that we can exor it with the left part of the uh, plain text right so now we and uh, now we need to understand that uh, how these s boxes will work so that thing i guess we'll be discussing in the next class okay so this uh, working of s boxes and all We'll be discussing it in the next class.